Good morning, good morning, and again to say good morning. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is a good God, and a wonderful God, a dynamic God, and an awesome God, a saving God, and a delivering God, a blessing God. That's the God that we serve. I just want to come this morning and just give you a Holy Ghost booster shot. I'm not going to keep you long this morning. But sometimes we just need to hear something from God. We just need to hear words sometimes to to rejuvenate ourselves, to, to be inspired, to build up hope and faith and trust in God in tough times. Because we're dealing with some tough times right now. I was looking at the news and they were talking about how many people have been out of work for months have not received an unemployment check. They don't know how they're going to pay their bills, pay their rent, their mortgage, car notes, how they're going to buy food. They have no money. And there's some jobs that have closed and never going to reopen again. We don't know how long this pandemic is going with the COVID-19. And then we have the protesters marching for injustice that's been taking place all over the world. On top of all other things that take place in life. So I just want to give you a word from the Lord this morning. And what we'll talk about is prayer. Prayer is the essential part of a child of God's life. You can't make it in this world if you don't take time to pray to God. You need prayer. We all need prayer. See, prayer, what, what is prayer? Well, let me tell you. Prayer is an open communication with God. Prayer strengthens your relationship with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God wants to hear directly from you. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, somebody. Tell them what's on your mind. Tell them what's in your heart. Tell them what you're dealing with. Tell them how you're feeling about things. And if you're angry, you're upset about things, Talk to God about it. You can pray to God for anything and everything. And God said, Jesus Christ told us, See, whatever you ask the Father, in my name, that's according to his will, that he will do it for you. It's so amazing how the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Man, that was dynamic. And all you got to do, that's what I love about Jesus. You can ask him a question and he'll give you a straight answer. See, talking to God is like talking to your best friend. You can open your heart to God. Like my mother used to tell me. You can talk to God about any and everything that's taking place in your life. And God will not open his mouth and tell somebody else what you just told him. God will keep that with him and it will stay with him. You can pray to him. You can talk to him. He's your friend. He's your father. He's your savior. He's your helper. He's your blesser. He's your all and all. And God ain't going to tell nobody about what you just talked to him about. Oh Lord, God is so, so good. God is our Heavenly Father. He wants us to call on him. I had a talk with a brother one day. Brother, I always kept asking him I saw him. He said, man, I want you to pray for me. Man, I want you to pray for me. Man, I want you to pray for me. I, you know, I said, I have a problem with that. You know, that's intercessory prayer. I got a problem with intercessory prayer. But one day he asked me this, and I said, look, man, you 
need to pray for yourself. You need to take time out and call on God for yourself. God will answer your prayer faster if you take the time out to talk to God and pray to God and commune with God and relationship with God and tell God about what you're dealing with. Then we keep interceding for you. Jesus Christ already. Jesus Christ is the interceding. He is the mediator between God and man. So if you go to God in the name of Jesus Christ, God hears your prayer and God will answer your prayer. You keep coming to me. Go to the Lord. Talk to God about your, your situation. Talk to God about what's taking place. I don't have a problem coming here and going to my prayers. I'm praying for you. But man, ain't no better, ain't no better way to get an answer from God when you start praying for yourself. And I know that for myself. Go to Him. Pray to Him. Talk to Him. And when you talk to God, God will reveal things to you that nobody else will know anything about. And God will give you the wisdom from on high how to deal with your situation. Because of the Holy Ghost filled wisdom that He's going to give you. And not you make understand it, but only you will understand it. And you the one that's going to benefit from it. You the one that's going to see the results from it. And now you can say for yourself, God is good. Lord, God is good. I want to read passage of scripture here from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 33. I pick up at verse 1 uh, to verse 3. Just bear with me. I just want to give you a Holy Ghost booster shot this morning. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. The second time God spoke to him. While he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Now you understand something, Jeremiah was a prophet. And people hated to see the prophet come. If the prophet was going to tell you, Thus saith the Lord, what you were doing wrong, or thus said the Lord, what you were doing right. Well, Jeremiah was sent to the children of Israel to tell them what they were doing wrong and how they were out of line with God. They had put God on the back burner of life. Matter of fact, they didn't even pray to God no more. They didn't even talk to God no more. They had built false idols and started worshiping false idols and praying to false idols. And God was angry with the children of Israel and God sent a prophet by the name of Jeremiah to tell the children of Israel what they were doing wrong. And then they would tear down their idols and come back to God and repent of their sins that God will forgive them of their sins and God will bless them. So when they were mad with Jeremiah and they threw Jeremiah in prison. They threw him into a pit, a mud pit. And that's what Jeremiah is. Now, verse 3. Look what God is saying when, when Jeremiah is calling on him for help because he's in prison. He's in the inner court. He's in the inner prison. He ain't just in jail. He's down in the bottom, bottom place of prison. Verse 3. Look what God says. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee Great and mighty things which thou knowest. Now, hold on. I need to back up on that one. I need to back up on that one. Look what God says to Jeremiah when Jeremiah has called on him from in prison. God says, call on me. He didn't say call mama. He didn't say call daddy. He didn't say call your aunts and your uncles. Your cousins and your friends. He ain't call. He ain't call your sister and your brothers. He ain't say call your homeboys and your sister girls. He ain't say call your co-workers, your boss, and all these other people. He said, "No, call on me, because I am your helper. I am your savior. I am your deliverer. I'm the one that's going to help you through your situation. These people ain't going to just sit back and talk about you." God said, "Call on me. Put your hope and your trust." In me. Look, he said, call upon unto me, and I will answer thee. Now this is personal. God is saying, I will answer thee, and look, I will answer you. 
listen, and show thee or show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hold on, let me break that down. When he said, call, and I will show you. What that means is, what is it? Word show means to manifest to you. To broadcast. To display openly. To show something openly for everyone, by everyone, everybody else to see that what God is doing for you. That's what that means, show. Call on me, and I will answer you, and I will show you, or show thee, great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We call on everybody. We call everybody. Instead of calling on God, we in trouble right now in this world, and we need to take time to pray, to seek the Lord, but well, we got time to seek the Lord. We need to call on the master of all creation and ask God for his mercy, ask God for his help, ask God for his deliverance, ask God for his saving power. Talk to me, somebody. We call everybody. You call the White House, you call the Congress, you call our senators and all the other people. Call on God! And let God intervene. And let God work on the situation. And let God deal with this thing. And then you, 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 you know what the word call me? Call me is to die. To talk to. To have an open communication. And I don't know about nobody else, but I like calling on God. The God has always showed up when I called on Him. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't just call on God when you're in trouble. Have an open communication with God all day long, every day, all day, all night, all morning. Talk to Him about everything that you're dealing with. Talk to him about what you're going through. When I get up in the morning, I'm calling on him. Father, I, I just call on you right now. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for being good to me. I just want to have an open conversation with you. I want, to, I want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. In the bottom of the shadow of the Almighty. I want to get close to him. So when I get up in the morning, I take my deep breath. I say, Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for being good to me. Thank you for watching over me and watching over my family. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for what you have done in the past and what you're doing right now and the things that you're going to do in the future. I want to thank you, Lord, that you saved my soul through our Lord the Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, Father, for the precious Holy Spirit, my comforter and my God who leads me into all truth. I just want to thank you, Father, for protecting me from the hidden danger, the seen and the unseen danger. I just want to thank you, Lord, for being a child of God. I want to thank you, Lord, that you wrote my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life, never to be erased. I want to thank you, Lord. That's who I come in the morning. And then I keep it up all day long. Lord, when I say I eat me a meal, thank you, Lord, for this meal that you bless me with. I thank you for it, Lord, because what you were the provider. You the one that made it happen. I thank you, Lord, for the home that you bless me with. You always provide. Uh, the money is always there to pay the rent and pay the car. So you, you, are, you are a provider. You, when I'm sick of my body, Lord, you the one I call on for healing. And you heal my body from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Call on him. Don't call everybody else tell them about your problems. Call on God. In the book, in the book of Acts, chapter 20, excuse me, chapter 2. Verse 21, the Bible says this, And it shall come to pass that the world shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you call everybody. If you got saved yet, you call on your friends. Have your friends delivered you yet? 
You call on all your coworkers and with all your problems. There's an old song that says, you can count on Jesus, tell them all about your problems. He will hear your famous cry and he will answer you by and by. And your friends helped you yet. To call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I need some saving every day. Because I ain't perfect in no way, shape, or form. And nobody else is. We all need to be saved. And we got to keep being saved. We all need God. We all need Jesus. We all need the Holy Spirit. We all need to be saved each and every day because there's things that are going to come up in your life that you had not even planned for and trouble will show at your front door. It will show with his bag in his hand and say, knock on your door and say, hey, I'm moving in for a while and I'm going to stay with you for a while and I'm going to cause trouble in your marriage. I'm going to cause trouble in your finance. I'm going to cause trouble with your children. I'm going to cause trouble in your job. I'm going to cause trouble everywhere you go. I need some saving every day. I need to call on the Lord every day. I need his help every day. I need his deliverance every day. I need his protection every day. I need his provision every day. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? Call on him. And he'll answer you. And the blessed part about calling on the Lord, if you pick up that Holy Ghost cell phone and you call on Jesus and you dial that special Holy Ghost cell phone number, Lord have mercy. 53787. If you don't know what it is, look it up on your phone and look at the numbers and see what it spells. And if you don't know what it spells, I'll tell you what it spells right now. It spells Jesus. And when you call on Jesus, your helper, your deliverer, your savior, your blesser, you will not get a drop call. Your phone will not be disconnected. You will never go to a certain area that the cell phone tie in heaven cannot reach. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You ain't gonna get nobody calling you somebody, hey, you owe so much money in your bill, and if you don't if you don't pay this bill, we're gonna cut off your phone. No, no, God don't work like that. And God is waiting to hear from you. See, Father's Day is on the 21st. I think that's Sunday. If you want to give God the greatest Father's Day gift in the world, God wants to hear from you. And we run out to the store, the malls, and all that stuff like that we buy. And nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. You want to get Daddy a tie, a new tie. Like Daddy ain't got enough ties. Or you want to take Daddy out to get a bite to eat. And the line of McDonald's is 100 miles long. Get that 99 cent cheeseburger. That's all right. You're going to get something for Daddy. If Daddy is there to provide for you and take care of you and watch over you and protect you and make sure you get food on the table and clothes on your back and roof over your head. But Daddy had to have somebody else too. Daddy had to have a father to go to, to pray to in your behalf. To be able to put those, provide for him to give those things to you. So the greatest gift you can give God today is you. Yeah, if you pass around a basket and you put your couple dollars in it, you think you did your thing. No, no, no. The greatest gift that God could ever receive, not that change in your pocket, God wants you. He wants your life. He wants your heart. He's waiting on you to call on him. And all you have to do is call on him. Jesus Christ already told us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So if you want to give God the greatest Father's Day gift, give him yourself. Come to him. Repent of your sins. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you have not been baptized, you are welcome to come here when all this uh, coronavirus situation has calmed down and, and you are welcome to come here to our church. If you live in the Silver Spring area, 3106 Fairland Road in Silver Spring, Maryland, 20904. 
You can find it on our website at abc.org. I'll say it again, abc.org. You can go on our website. You can click on the link. You need prayer. You can click on the link. We'll pray for you. And all you have to do is accept Christ. Because all you're going to ever hear when you get to heaven is, I, did you accept my son? If it's a yes, welcome into heaven, the house of God. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, he'll tell you to your face, I never knew you. So if you want to accept Christ when all this corona things has died down and the church is open again, you're welcome to come on down here to the church in Silver Spring and stand before the congregation and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. And we'll take you in the back room and we'll baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And your name will be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life forever, never to be erased. And if you make a decision that you want to join here, great, that's wonderful. And if you decide that you don't want to join, still, that's great, that's wonderful. But the number one thing is this. That you turn your life over to the Lord and you're baptized in his name. That's our job. That's our job here on the earth. Gathering souls here for the kingdom of God. And that's our, that's our work. To make the disciples of Christ. To bring into the household of faith. To bring into the position of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And say, I need God in my life. Give him a try for a while. And see what he'll do for you. Call on him. He's waiting to hear from you. And I'm so glad. That I was around praying people. And preaching people. That told me. Call on the name of the Lord. And that he will answer you. And show you. Great and mighty things that. You. Know not. I'm a living witness of the goodness of God. Amen. Before, I, before we close out this broadcast, I'd like to pray for all the names of those that's in this box here. This is our prayer box, our prayer basket. And all the names that are in here, all their requests, all their pledges, we don't open them. We put them in the sealed envelope. We don't know what they ask God for. And all we do is lift it up to heaven. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for all your blessings, Father. We know that you're a healing God, a loving God, a kind God, a wonderful God, a blessing God, a delivering God, a saving God. And all we got to do is call on your holy and precious name. For all the names that's in this box here, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and all those that may see this broadcast, Father, I pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ that you intervene in their behalf and that you will bless them, Father. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially, Father. And that the angels of heaven are kept around them to protect them from hurt, harm, or danger in this world, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that, that you're just good, Father. That you just talk to their heart and talk to their mind and talk to their spirit, Father. And let them know that you're there for them. And that you care about them. That you love them. That you'll never leave them nor forsake them. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise God for you. And I pray that heaven smile on each and every one. And that God will bless you and keep you and watch over you and provide for you. Lord have mercy. He's a provider. I know. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We praise you today. Lift your hands up. Just give us some thanks. And there's all God wants somebody to do, just to thank him for his goodness and his mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, we pray to you. In Jesus' name. Let me read this before I close. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord look his conscience upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the church and everybody in the world say, Amen.